It's bigger than scheduling. It's really about the strategy, again, of always taking anything that you're doing and you're going to want to compress that. So what I would say is if you're doing something, how we're always looking at, we have little scrum meetings a couple of times a week, and those are uh, just teeny little bursts of meetings. If you can't do a meeting standing up, it's too long. So we might have a meeting for, you know, 15, 20 minutes with the three of us a couple of times a week. And we're always tweaking and looking at what we're doing. And we're always saying, okay, if this is 12 steps, how can we get it down to eight? Because again, we want to follow that 60, 40 rule. We want to be doing more things. And as I mentioned with our, when the hour, when the day podcast, you know, in the fall, we're going to be going to two episodes a week. So we're going to double our output, but our workload is only going to increase 12%. So you want to be really have a strategy and these things, they're not difficult, but the strategy is really important. Talking with the experts. Hello and welcome to Talking with the Experts. My name is Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com. And Talking with the Experts is about all things business by business owners for business owners. And you can find it on all good podcasting streaming platforms and on YouTube. And today my guest is Chris Ward. And Chris Ward uh, is the go-to person for everything. She lost her biggest support um, sometime and it felt like demand on her had increased by 10. So imagine if you were paddling with someone in a canoe and now imagine if they took the other paddler away and they added weight to the boat and turned you around and you had to paddle upstream by yourself. Perhaps there is some cliffs and some white water rapids that popped up randomly when you didn't expect it. And that's how Chris felt. So she um, started a business and uh, it's called we, um, Win the Hour, Win the Day. And I think that's a terrific name. And we're going to be talking about team building. Welcome, Chris. How are you today? Oh, I'm all pumped and ready to go. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So tell me a little bit more about your business because you sound very inspiring about what you've done to turn your life around. Uh, So I'm not sure my life was turned around. What happened was I'm a marketing strategist and I was in business the first couple of years, like so many people just working insane, crazy hours, like day, night, night and day. And, uh, you know, people reported that I was starting to lose some of my charm. And I thought, yeah, that can't be. And my husband was my biggest supporter. And now all of a sudden you're snapping at him because you're tired. And, you know, he was always cheering me on so enthusiastically. So I thought, well, I gotta look at this differently. Like, you know, I had had mentors that talked to me about different things, but I was a go-to person for a lot of people in my life. And, and I got a lot done in a day. So I kind of thought I'm organized. What, you know, what more can be done? And so I started to feverishly examine, you know, team building and productivity and all that that, you know, sort of spoke to me about. And, you know, to move the story along, I went from working 16 hours a day down to six. It was unbelievable. But the big lesson was how much I had been working against myself. And it was, you know, I just didn't realize how all that work that I thought was noble was actually to my deficit. And so I turned it around and luckily I did because uh, it was a couple of years after that, that my husband had been diagnosed with colon cancer and I had been pulled away from the business. And uh, when I was pulled away from the business, you know, when I returned after his passing, you know, my existing clients had no idea of my absence, none. And they started to ask me like, how did I manage that? Like, you know, we just didn't feel it was good for business and we were very positive in nature. So we didn't, you know, we felt that if the doctors were wrong, we sat around for two years crying, holding hands. If the doctors were right, we sat around the last two years holding hands and crying. So, you know, so then my existing clients started to ask me about if I could work with them under the capacity of team building. And that's really how when the hour, when the day was born, I started working with them and then more people wanted help. And, and then I really wanted to create a movement where your business supports your life instead of consuming it. And so I thought, well, let me write a book and see how many more people I can reach. Excellent. So where's the, firstly, before we go any further, where is the book available? 
You can buy the book on you know Amazon, no matter where you are. That's the quickest and easiest place to grab it. Absolutely wonderful. That's a great start, Amazon. Go to Amazon. Amazon has everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So what do you advise would be the first steps in building a team? Well, you know, really, boy, oh, boy, until you have a team, I call it your win team, your what is next team. So really, when you're an entrepreneur, it's about getting ideas to execution. That's it. And so when you look at somebody, you've got a little professional jealousy, you think, oh, how they're always getting stuff done, or they have more resources, or they're lucky. They're just getting ideas to execution. That's it. And so the win team, what is next, allows you to get to what is next, what is next. And so really, you, you definitely need to start a team like day one. And I use the word team, but I'm all about having a lean team. Like you can, you can have two, three people, you know, and you're like, you know, we get a lot done. We have a podcast, the Win the Hour, Win the Day podcast, where we talk about general business, how to get to your next win now. Um, I've written a book. I'm going to be writing another book. I guest on other shows. We've got info products. We do different levels of coaching, group coaching. We're starting this masterclass. I do all those things and I have a team of four, right? So, you know, you really can do well with a team, you know, one or two extra people, but it's really not about the bodies. It's about how it's set up. And that's what I call our 60, 40 win formula. And that means that you should be in, you know, most entrepreneurs are in um, the web of admin, at least 80% of the time, but the 60, 40 win formula, we believe you should be in creation mode 60% of the time and admin mode 40% of the time, because you always need to be getting that next thing out. You didn't start a business just to run a business and be caught up in the paperwork. So you really want to have a team that allows you to constantly be utilizing that 60, 40 win formula. Yeah. So what about the 80, 20 rule? Well, you know what, we can debate all kinds of other rules out there. Uh, We can the whole idea of eat the frog, do that thing you don't want to do first. I disagree with that as well. So I don't I think those rules are are very, you know, they have their own lane, but it's it's not a concept I buy into I, I don't, you know, that's a whole different mindset, the 80 20 rule, like, you know, so what we're talking about strategy and executing. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't um, follow the 80 20 rule either. Yeah. I think it's um, a bit silly. Yeah. But then, you know, it, it's, it's horses for courses, I guess, whatever suits some, yeah. you know, doesn't actually suit others. So yeah, there's lots of flavors of ice cream out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how does, um, you know, team building build into personal development? Well, you know, it's all about personal development because first of all, if you're running around like what I used to call myself, you know, a Russiaholic, I'm now a recovering Russiaholic. And you, there's no time for personal development at all. I mean, studies show that when you are fatigued and tired, it's just not how the brain performs at any sort of peak level. You're impatient, you're, you're more emotionally sensitive, you're not, your logic is diminished. And also, you know, studies show that in all mankind, the best and most powerful inventions came in times of relaxation and play. That's when the mind does best. And so when you're rushing, 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 you know, there's no time for anything. So first of all, I would argue is personal development. You definitely want to have that in your life. And you can't if you're running around what I call in hysterical mode, right? Mm. So there is that. And then having a team, you know, that really a rising tide lifts all ships. And so, man, do you really get to learn about yourself when you have a team that just really empowers you and encourages you and you're moving together forward? So it, I think it really enhances and grows your personal development. Yeah, I agree. And I don't, I mean, I'm a a lifelong learner and I'm, you know, the next shiny object in learning I'm in for. So just so I can, you know, keep up with the trends or just better myself or just, you know, just to, because I can, yeah, I just like it. It's good. And, you know, if yeah. I'm learning something new, I think it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. yeah. I want to get up every day and do today better than I did yesterday. And you know what? You get the luxury of doing that when you have what we call a, what is next team, because then you are, you have room and space 
is my clients call it white space on your calendar so that you can explore those things and you can do it in an effective and timely manner instead of beating yourself up that you didn't get to this. And you're, oh, never mind that learning. I, I'm catching up over here, right? Yeah. So I'm all about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was the same when I went back to school, like in my 40s, I went back to um to college um, to learn well, three, I did three courses in two years. And um, honestly, it was the best thing I ever did. And now I just do courses online. And sometimes I get waylaid um, because of, you know, business, but they're not, because they're online, you usually get lifetime access to them. So you can do them anytime. And mm-hmm. I've done quite a few. So it's really good like that. So um, what else is there? Let me see. Um, scheduling is a really good tool for team building. Tell me how your, your team manages that. Well, it's bigger than scheduling. It's really about the strategy, again, of always taking anything that you're doing and you're going to want to compress that. So what I would say is if you're doing something, how we're always looking at, we have little scrum meetings a couple of times a week, and those are uh, just teeny little bursts of meetings. If you can't do a meeting standing up, it's too long. So we might have a meeting for, you know, 15, 20 minutes with the three of us a couple of times a week. And we're always tweaking and looking at what we're doing. And we're always saying, okay, if this is 12 steps, how can we get it down to eight? Because again, we want to follow that 60, 40 rule. We want to be doing more things. And as I mentioned with our, when the hour, when the day podcast, you know, in the fall, we're going to be going to two episodes a week. So we're going to double our output, but our workload is only going to increase 12%. So you want to be really have a strategy and these things They're not difficult, but the strategy is really important. So when I talk to people about creating a team, I'm not talking about hiring a VA and taking stuff off your desk and dumping it on theirs. And then you've got this parentified model where you check on them, you know, like a parent teacher thing. Are they doing it? All that stuff. Really, if your team is set up the way we do and with my coaching clients and group coaching clients and now our master class clients, what happens is the team really manages you. And, and, and their schedule is constantly being compressed as well. So, you know, for example, think of something simple, like, you know, you're making pasta and you think, oh, okay, it's really simple. Like, you know, you're in college and you got a jar of sauce and you've got noodles, no big deal. But, you know, if you didn't know to cook those noodles, very simple step, but very important, it's really going to be night and day in your results. Warm p- pasta sauce on top of hard noodles, not the same recipe, Right. So it's not rocket science. A lot of people can do it. It's really easily done, but the strategies are in play and super important. So it, it's so much bigger than people understand. It's not just about hiring bodies and getting a VA. A VA isn't the answer. What you really want to do is create what we call your, what is your next team? Yeah. So um, I guess strategy, you know, and that brings us to that, to a great point is about strategy and how, uh, you know, got the 60-40 rule, but tell me how, uh, um, you know, broaden that out a little bit and how it, people can understand it. Sure. In what capacity? Well, I guess, you know, um, we talked about the 80-20 rule, which yeah, is most yeah. people have been brought up with the 80-20 rule. Yeah. So tell yeah. me how your 60-40 rule differs from the 80-20 rule, or is it the same and just tweaked a little bit more? Well, no, because one is outcome, one is one is how you do it, and the other is the outcome. So the outcome is you should be in creation mode 60% of the time and in admin mode 40% of the time. Yeah. So where most entrepreneurs are in the web of admin, they're chasing the paperwork 80, 90% of the time, and then they try to crawl out of that. I know I did that for years. I'd be like, oh, I have to learn this new thing. So I'll do that tonight when I'm done my work at four o'clock. Oh, at five o'clock. All of a sudden, I'm now trying to take an info course at eight o'clock at night because I was in the web of admin the first couple of years I was in business 80% of the time. Whereas now it is really compressed for me and my team and my coaching clients that it's a very, it's, you know, a very small portion of my week is the admin part. And the other part is executing the next thing because everything is really about being an entrepreneur. It's getting to the next thing. It's either, you know, starting your podcast or increasing the volume or writing a book or writing the next book or doing coaching from one to one to one to many, you always, you know, all you do is climb up that mountain top and then see the next mountain. And what I'm saying is you don't need to climb it up and slide back down and have bloody knuckles and do all these crazy things. It's really profoundly 
you know, simple and strategic if you have the concept. And, and the type of people I work with, oh my gosh, they look so good on paper. Um, they're running around, they look good online. And then all of a sudden I might do a show like this. And all of a sudden I'm talking to somebody afterwards. They're like, oh my heavens, Chris, you know what? You really talk to me because I'm actually still working insane hours. Like I did the first two years as a business. And I thought that, I thought that would melt away and it didn't. And it kind of reminds me of, it's sort of like what people don't understand is it's like, if I, I asked you to picture, say, say you have a house plant. And you're looking at this plant and you go, oh, this is really great. I got a house plant. I kept it alive. I'm fantastic. Look at me. And then you go out and you say, I'm going to get another one. And then you're really excited. You've kept two house plants alive. Then you think, you know what? I should be a farmer. But what happens is the two house plants to the farm, the farm is really about executing and yielding a high outcome, right? And so, so many people when they start their business, they go from one client to three to seven, and they then start chasing the keep up. Oh, once I get caught up, once I get this, and they don't understand the infrastructure, the strategies, the setup is the backbone to the business. And it doesn't fall into play just because your business is growing. Because what will happen is your business will grow. You might even make more money, but you're not bringing more money home and you drop the ball and you upset people and you're stressed. You're working all those hours and all that stuff. So going from one client to five to seven or, and then you think, oh my gosh, in fact, I need more money and more business and I can barely keep up. So what people don't seem to, you know, what, what the world's not educating you on is it's not going to fall into grace and, and everything's going to fall into place just because you've been in business five years. That's not the outcome. The outcome is it's great to get more business, but you doing what you do is is different than what I do. And it's a whole nother career. Most people don't understand that. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, I've seen people, you know, our Russia, Russia holics, you know, like you were, and mm-hmm. it's always, you know, hustle, hustle, hustle to get the next client or get the next, you know, $10,000 a month or, or whatever. But, you know, they have no time with their families and they're just so busy. But sometimes it is busy being busy rather than busy doing something. Does it make sense? Yeah. And I think with, but I do think their heart's in the right place. And what happens is they're told that being a hard worker is part of the entrepreneur process. Mm. And then you, you beat your chest and you feel proud. Like I know throughout most of my life, people would tell me I was such a hard worker. And oh my gosh, I remember saying to my mother one day, who knew I'd have to unlearn working hard isn't like, isn't the answer like who, like that is the biggest compliment you could get. Right. So, mm-hmm. so sometimes they're also just chasing the wrong thing, especially in this age where, you know, Oh, well, what if this software does this for me? Or what if I could do that? Or I could save time here. And what I would tell you is the tools that I use and the most successful and financially free people in the world, most of them are free. It's not the tool. It's the strategy, right? Yeah, and- you use it. Yeah. Yeah. A hammer does not make me a good carpenter. I assure you. No, it doesn't. No. And I've seen some shocking carpenters, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's a really good explanation. Thanks for that. I really, um, it really brought it home to me that the explanation was totally like real and better than some I've heard. <laughs> So um, learning, we've talked about personal development and we've talked about strategy and how, and how you know, you don't need to work you know, stupid hours in your business to make stuff work. You just need to be smarter about how you do that. So um, have you got any sort of other hints and tips that you could, you know, along those lines that you could um, impart with yeah, us today? Yeah, so, so many people think... You know, so many people think that it costs a lot of money to have a team. So how my team started many, many years ago is, you know, I was still like, I went virtual like a long time ago, even when my business was down the street, it was just easier to have back-to-back appointments on Skype and show them my screen uh, desktop versus trying to explain to them in their office and do all this stuff. But Mm -hmm. many years ago, uh, the first couple of years I was in business, if I was going into a potential client's office, I sat there, I took notes, you know, and I was writing it down and 
And what would happen is I would promise hand to God that I would go back to the office and put these notes right in the computer. But of course I would get busy and distracted. So I would promise I would get that in, okay, Friday. So sometimes it was Friday. Sometimes it was the next Friday. And then the client, potential client would call and they'd ask me questions about it. And I got the opportunity to be one of two people. One, you could hear me scrambling, trying to you know figure my notes out mm. because they were meant for 20 minutes, not for two weeks. And two, what if I, I could misquote them and underquote myself or do whatever, or look like I'm trying to swindle them when in fact, I'm, I'm just, the notes are meant for 20 minutes. So I thought this cannot be like, it's, it's just such a dangerous game I was playing. And it was very stressful. And it would take me all Friday afternoon to figure out my notes and all this stuff. Cause again, they were meant for 20 minutes. So then I thought, okay, what can we do differently? So my first outsourcer, I found somebody to do transcriptions. Now, I don't get this, but she loved doing transcriptions. She had 10 clients. It's all she did. So she was really fast. So I would leave the, the potential client's office and I would just sit in the car and I would talk into my phone and do an audio file. She would transcribe it, put it right into the client's you know, notes online and they'd be there within hours and so detailed because that was fresh in my mind and I'm just talking and it's so easy. Now, some weeks I needed her for three, four hours of meetings. Some weeks I needed her for none. But the weeks I needed her a lot, it was like 12 bucks because she was so fast at it. And it was her, her zone of genius. And so I thought, oh my gosh, for $12, I got rid of so much stress. I got all Friday noon back. And then, you know, I never made, a, a, clearly I was charging my clients more than $12. So I didn't make a mistake and lose a client. And that's how it started for me. And the lesson here, what I invite you to sort of think about is these things pay for themselves. And so, you know, again, I encourage you to understand that getting a VA and just putting them beside you and monitoring their work is not building a team because uh, you'll just be worse off when they, you know, when they move on or, or, or as the business grows, you can't duplicate, you know, that work. Uh, so you, you really want to be mindful that you're creating a team, but with the right strategies in place, you really can duplicate work really efficiently. And again, free up more and more of your time so that you can be out there doing what you love to do in a creative element and, you know, making impact on the people you want to make an impact on and not be what I call a sufferpreneur. Yeah, that's a good word too. Yeah. And I like your strategy about talking into your phone, into an audio program. That's a great idea. My, one of my uh, business friends does that and um, she is forever, you know, sending stuff off for transcription because, um, she, she, you know, she, as you said, meetings are, and you take notes and, um, you know, by the time you get back to the office, you think, oh, what did I write here or what did that mean or what did whatever. So, yeah, that's a really great idea. Well, um, and even now my poor transcriptionists have been replaced by so many very cheap, like my, I always send it to somebody on my team if I need something transcribed, but then they just plug it into a software that's pennies, pennies, right? So even that, that $12 got cheaper. It's even yeah. cheaper now. Yeah, I use... Um, for, for my podcasts, I use um, a uh, transcription thing for, you know, I mean, it's not totally accurate, but it's close enough for yeah. the show notes because um, I can just uh, change them. So it's not a big, a big deal, but, you know, it's, it saves me time. Yeah. So it's a great program. And it, I think it costs me like 10 bucks a month or something. So it's not yeah. overly expensive. And I do like six or eight podcasts a week. So it's very cost efficient. Yeah. Hmm. So any sort of um, last wise words, Chris? Uh, yeah. Well, right now we are actually, for the first time, we're starting a master. Uh, we're going to be doing a free mastermind inside our group. We just started a new group and we're going to be giving all kinds of behind the scenes secrets and show you how to do things. And it's just going to be, I'm really wanting to over deliver because I really do you want to create a movement where your business supports your life instead of consuming it? So I would really invite and encourage everyone to check us out on Facebook and join our community. Tell me that you heard me on this fantastic podcast and we'll be fast friends. And uh, yeah, check out some, uh, some really awesome things that we're working on that will really sort of just, just show you that the way you're doing it, grinding it out is outdated, unnecessary, and really limiting your potential beyond any understanding that you have. I mean, most of my clients tell us that within the first month of working with us, that they get 25 hours back a week within the first month of working with wow, us. Wow, so, that's a lot of hours. Yeah, 
Yeah, it is a lot. And it's consistent across the board. They tell me that all the time. So definitely uh, check us out, join the community and and see what you can do. Well, you know, picture what you could do with that free time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you could go, I don't know, on holiday. (laughs) So what's the name of the group, Chris? Yeah, so it's uh, just check us out when the hour, when the day group, uh, or go to Chris Ward and reach out to me there on Facebook or anything like that. You can, for your audience, you could also check out, I've got free gift from Chris, K R I S dot com, free gift, G I F T from Chris, K R I S dot com. And we've got some real goodies in there as well. We even have the ultimate guide to getting a co op student 200 plus free hours. We, uh, we've had about 30, 40 co-op students now. You can do that throughout the world. And each one of them comes with 200 hours that they have to fulfill to get credits. So we can show you how to do that. Uh, mm-hmm. That's not, you know, that's icing on the cake. You can't rely on them mm-hmm. as far as your team because they rotate. So you don't want to, that's a short-term answer, but it sure does. It's a bonus when you've got some overflow work for sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So where else can they find you other than Facebook, um, LinkedIn, I'm assuming? Yeah, LinkedIn for sure. Google me, I'm everywhere. All right, lovely. All right, Chris, thank you so much for your time today. It's been a fascinating discussion about thank teamwork. You, and, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's totally a different perspective on, on um, the usual, you know, stuff that people talk about building teams. So thank you so much. It's, it's been great. Thank you. Thanks, Chris.